How's it, guys? Um, so we're here this morning um, with Michael Cannon. Uh, we went out and fished the Nanda Bass Club event. Uh, it was one of the the final of the Angler of the Year or something to that effect. Um, and it was a really good day. And we'll get to those fish catches, um, you know, towards uh, as this video goes on. At the end, you'll see those fish catches. It's really cool. So you'll learn a lot of stuff from it. But this morning, I just wanted to chat with Michael, just banter backwards and forwards, and basically have a chatterbait chat. Um, and discuss uh, rod reel line that sort of stuff and just how to fish the bait you know I think that the videos you're putting up are great but we're not giving maybe a step by step or a play by play of how to fish it sort of technique wise and I think that's you know that's what we need to to do today to help you guys catch more fish because at the end of the day that's what we're really here for is we're trying to get everybody to catch more fish so yeah Michael I don't know if you want to just start maybe describe your day yeah, well, let me start and just describe how, how I fish it, what setup I fish it on, give you the rundown on basically what you need to know if you are going to be throwing the bait. Um, basically, very important, you need to have yourself a very um, good chatterbait rod. We've all been punting this uh, Pesca Pro Series, which is a beautiful rod. It's a 6.9, medium heavy, extra fast, uh, 10 to 17 pound uh, line rating. Uh, yeah, and it's basically a 3 to half ounce uh, uh, weight rating for your your lures and it's a beautiful rod guys when you chuck it out there the fish load up nicely on it you give it the rod's got enough uh, tip to load up when those fish eat it close to the boat so it's a fantastic rod this is the this is the exact setup you need you don't need anything else um, when you're fishing there's two ways and Brian will um, talk about the second option when you when you select your line um, I like to fish on 16 pound fluorocarbon okay um, I just believe that uh, when, when you're fishing it in, in, in sort of clearer water conditions, um, the fish don't see it. Uh, also, the bait gets down a bit uh, deeper, doesn't rise up too high in the water column. All that. So I like to fish it like that. 16 pounds more than enough, um, so you can fight your fish in around thick cover. Whereas Brian, on the other hand, he fishes it on uh, straight braid. Okay, and he'll elaborate a bit more on that shortly. But uh, yeah, so guys, going back to the setup, you've got your rod, you've got your line, you need um, fish it on a 7 to 1 or 8 to 1 um, speed reel ratio. Um, I think it's important because those fish often hit and come running towards you and you need to be able to catch up to those fish. And those loose reels are perfect. Uh, all, all the 7 and 8 to 1 uh, gear ratios that we, they have in stock are fantastic for that. And um, when working the bait, let's talk a bit about that. You want to basically be always making contact with cover. So you want to throw it out in a long cast, let it go down a foot or two, depending on what depth you, you're fishing. Start, immediately start uh, reeling, and then as you feel cover, you know, you want to kind of like pop it out of that cover, and that's when those big fish eat it. It's all about reaction, guys. You know, yeah, you'll catch a couple if you just wind it straight back to the boat, but if you want to really get those reaction bites and the big ones to, to eat, you need to get that, it has to do something erratic. It has to clash into cover. It has to deviate and head off in a different direction. Um, so yeah, that's basically the, the key of it. Uh, the Z-Man chatterbait that we're fishing, we're throwing it with razor shad, shad trailers on the back. Um, it's the perfect trailer. There are a couple of other variations the guys are using, but um, guys, it's working. Don't, you don't need to try anything else. That's what's working. You're getting chomped, you'll check the videos, you're catching lots of fish. Big fish too. Albert Falls is on fire. Um, this bait's elastic. You, you'll go through one bait all day. Um, I mean, I, I think I've probably had one bait for the last three trips. It's it's been fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a very nice profile. You see, it's got very thin sort of <laughs> breakages, or if you want to call it that, on the tail here. So it gives it a beautiful kicking action. Um, and those big bass are just eating it. So yeah, guys, I don't know if you want to discuss a little bit about uh, the braid setup, Brian, and what you experienced. Yeah, I think uh, exactly right. You know, we went out there. Although we weren't fishing together as a team, I would have obviously, you know, as a one-two punch, I think it would be a good option. And, and I'll tell you why I fished it on braid. Look, I had, I had both setups on the boat. I did have the fluorocarbon set up as well. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of big fish at Albert Falls at the moment. And there's a lot of shallow cover as well, like, you know, dead chicamba and, and, and stick-ups and, and, and bushes and stuff like that. You know, when you get stuck into three or four kilo fishes, what you're trying to catch, I don't want to be undergunned on that. So, I'm, you know, once that fish is on, most certainly I've got them dominated with that braid, you know. The rod handled very well, so I was quite impressed, although obviously the rod is only rated, you know, 17 pound fluoro type rating. The rod can handle the braid, which was very nice. Now, I wouldn't re recommend swinging a three, four kg bass with braid on this rod. It wasn't designed for that. But for fishing it and technique wise, it handled it exceptionally well. It's got a wonderful load on the tip. So even when they eat it on braid, there's no stretch 
catch in the, on the braid. The rod does the work for you. So when they eat it close by as well, you still get that that hook set. The rod, like, the rod, the rod bends a little bit, and then obviously the backbone then bites, and then you can set the hook in. So that's what we kind of mean about the the load of the rod. So yeah, the braid setup. Basically, the areas we were fishing, the water was a bit murkier. So then you know the, immediately there, I start to, to trend towards braid. You know, if it's if it's super clean water or bright skies, then I'll go more towards the the fluorocarbon. But with the braid, it obviously gives me like I say the power that I want. So I've got a dirty water type murky situation, so there's less vis less visibility of that braid. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Also, I can sling it far. I've got a lot of power for my buck on the braid, 50 pound. So I've got that power. And yeah, it's just a really good sort of direct hook set. One issue I had the week before when we put that other video up is on a long cast, I was struggling to catch, to set the hook on those fish. You know, the rod would load up fantastically well, but there's so much line out. I was fishing a loose custom pro and you really throw the line off the reel on that thing. So it's a really long cast. With that braid, it allows me to set that hook so much more efficiently. And we did have a scenario up in the river where Michael lost a good fish, probably close to four kilos. You know, he had an opportunity there and it was at the end of, it was on the end of a, of a long cast. A long cast, yeah. Now, I think I would have got that fish with Brad. Yeah, I think so, yeah. you know. But then having said that, if you watch the you know video, he got two fish close to four kilos very quickly on early in the morning and I didn't get those bites. So, you know, it's it's, it's half of one dozen of the other, you know. Could we have a look and say, well, I, would, I might have caught a, a fish. If I was fishing fluoro in the morning, would I have got more bites? If I was fishing fluoro throughout the day, would I have got more bites? You know, that's we can argue those points. But at the end of the day, if I get a bite, I want to put the fish in the boat. And that's just kind of the percentage game that I'm playing. If I'm fishing clean water, different scenario. If it's clean water and a bright sunny sky, bluebird, different scenario. I'll put the braid stick down, no problem, and I fish the fluorocarbon. So just be mindful of that. But I'm pretty convinced if you get this one rod, you rig up. If you're a tournament angler and you want to be rigged up and ready to go and set up, one with braid, one with fluoro, and you're pretty much done. Okay. This is the, I think that pretty much covers the reasons for using braid, you know. That's it. Okay. Razor Shad, Z-Man Razor Shad is really the trailer of choice you guys can experiment with different stuff it's entirely up to you and i'll explain to you why i think this is a winning trailer at the moment apart from what i've learned on videos and articles in the states at the moment it's got a really really aggressive tight action okay with these joints like michael points out in the tail so you've got the chatter baits and it's, it's vibrating quickly from left to right left to right left to right okay and then that trailer behind it is matching it if you put a, a paddle tail or something like that You've got this. You've got this vibrating blade in front, and then you've just got this slow sort of kick um, of a paddle tail, and that for me doesn't really match. I want to have the same kind of vibration in the front as on the back, and that does that. When you see that thing, you can maybe Google some underwater footage. We don't even have that available for you, but if you check some of it out, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. Um, it's got a fantastic profile to it, and you can pretty much just put put that on and and go. Color wise, guys. Um, green pumpkins working well. I think a black blue would have been a good option as well. Water, yeah. yeah, so I think those are the ones we just didn't have any of those. Unfortunately, we need to look into that. And then if you're fish, fishing a clean water scenario, you can also fish a bluegill top color, um, white or chartreuse and white. You know, um, there you can put a pearl trailer on there. And then in, in a, if there was a bright sky, bluebird skies, then I'm looking at a color called bad shad, okay, which is more of a translucent, it's got a bit of black flake. And then as well, what you want to do is you want to trim your skirt down, um, just, just basically to where that hook is, so that you've got more profile of your trailer, less aggressive skirt. That'll be a more natural presentation, um, in my opinion, um, you know, fishing in a clean water scenario. And then you're also going to manage your flash, which is, which is something else. I think that, you know, we're fishing in dirty water, overcast rainy day, we went with the painted blades. Um, you know, I just think that makes more sense to me. It looks more natural. And then perhaps, you know, if you want to look at the shiny blades, that's something you should maybe look at doing when the skies are bright, bright and there's light, sort of like a spinnerbait type presentation. Um, you know, that's that's something to look at there as well. Technique-wise, basically, just as Michael said, with this, with a chatterbait, if you just chunk and wind, you will get bites, but your bites will be a lot limited. You know, a lot of the bites, I'd say most of the bites that I certainly got, and obviously we've had the discussion as well, happen when you deviate or deflect off something. So there's two ways of, two ways of doing that. You know, chatterbait is semi weedless, it's not exceptionally weedless, okay? So you want to throw it through the cover, through the grass, through the jacamba and, the, and those sorts of vegetations, sticks, etc. And then it will naturally deflect off that. So when you're winding it, just a slow wind, you'll feel the line as it starts rubbing over a branch or something, okay? Then you'd be prepared for that. And maybe just pump your, your reel handle once or twice, just to pop it over. And a lot of times that's when you'll get your butt. If you're fishing above grass, line, above grass and stuff like that, then you'll need to impart that action on the chatterbait yourself. So that'll be pumping the reel and stopping it, twitching it, all those sorts of things. Do something so that it does something different. And you'll be amazed how many times that's exactly when you get those bites. So, you know, that's definitely going to help you catch catch more fish. 
when you get hung up, I think one of the benefits of fluorocarbon versus braid, obviously braid, because uh, you want to fish this top to cover, so you are going to get hung up. So with the braid, you can rip it out. The problem with that is it leaves the grass very quickly because there's no stretch at all, at all in, in the braid comparison to the flora. Obviously, you know, we, you know, we know that flora's got less stretch than a nylon monofilament, but it's still got some sort of give to it. So what would happen is, you know, I'll be hung up on the braid and I'll rip it out and that chatterbait shoots out. The fish have got no chance of getting it, you know. If he's watching it, it's hung up, it shoots out. He can't really get to it because it's, it's, as I said, it's traveled too quickly out of the zone. Whereas it happens to Michael on fluorocarbon, he pulls it out, it accelerates out, that fish can still get out and grab it. So I think that's another thing to consider, you know, when you're fishing, if you're fishing grass, if you're in your areas, if there's grass lakes there, or dams that's got grass in it, or vegetation, and you're ripping it out, because that's kind of where you want to be fishing, that, that this is exactly where you want to be. Um, you know, presentation-wise, you want to be fishing around the, the cover and stuff like that. So, you know, in a nutshell, you know, that's pretty much it, dude. I don't know what else we need to cover. Um, Oh, just to touch on the, 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 the silver blade story you said, yeah. it. guys, another little uh, tip which you can do if you're worried about the silver blade and you want to have a painted vision, just take a permanent marker, black marker, and color that thing in, and you'll be able to, to get that black blade. Um, I think personally, uh, going with a, a painted blade is better because I've never seen like a bluegill with a silver head, you know. Uh, I, I, I'd look for more of a natural approach. Um, something that's more subtle and natural in the water, not some big flashing silver. Um, but I think I'd leave that for the spinner baits, you know. Mm -hmm. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, did right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think, guys, if there are any questions, you know, feel free to comment on the videos. Um, you're welcome to send us messages as well um, through Facebook or whatever channel. It's just going to help us have these types of discussions. Um, you know, have those questions that we can answer. You know, guys, how do you fish a chatterbait? It's quite a broad question, so we can deal with that. If there's any subtleties, you know, because I'm, I'm guessing these guys that went, to, they've been chatterbait fishing the last two weeks, but they may be struggling to get those bites or convert it to fish catches. These are the kind of things that can help you make a difference. Sometimes it's just that last sort of 20% that makes all the difference. And, and that's what we're here for, essentially. We want to help you guys catch more fish. And um, yeah, give us those questions and we can definitely sort it out for you. That's it. That's it. 100%. Thank you guys. See you on the water. Catch the fish. Thank you, man. Okay, yeah, guys, so obviously we mentioned that we had to leave the dam early um, on Saturday and we found out what the results were. Basically, we were fishing the Nanda Bass uh, Club Angler of the Year uh, season final, if you want to call it that. And I ended up coming second for the day. A huge shout out to uh, Grant Hewitt. He put an absolute slab hammer of a bag together. I think he got around 14.7 kgs, which was Phenomenal fishing, and well done, Grant, if you're listening. Um, yeah, I agree. phenomenal fishing. But yeah, I mean, I was very happy with the, the day's fishing. We caught some good fish. It was good fun. I mean, you'll see, you'll see all the fish catches that we've got um, on camera today. I mean, just to touch on some of the footage, guys. It's obviously, you know. Um Fishing with Michael and I knew that, you know, I didn't have club points, so I'm, I'm not in their club, so I fished as a guest. So it was just difficult in the footage. Um, I haven't been through the clips yet, but you, we'll go through it now, you'll have a look. The clips, there's not that much. It's, it's like the fish are really close to the net, you know, I'm scrambling for the camera and the net at the same time. It's quite a stressful environment, you know, I need to get this fish in the boat. So yeah, look, um, the footage is as best as I could get, so I hope you like it, I hope it came out okay. But yeah, that's just a reason why the footage might be a bit dodgy in this one. So check it out. It's still going to be a lot of fun. I hope it's going to help you guys catch more fish. Um, yeah, so enjoy. Very good. Well done. Good on. Nice. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, man. <laughs> That dog, sorry boys, I was slowing the camera there. Third class this morning, boys. Dogs, dogs, dogs. We had, dogs. To, <laughs> had to get in the boat quickly. Chatterbait in the mouth, raise yeah. a shad, Z man's for that. That's Check that oaks on the one side there, Bruce. Swing them right. Check that. Yeah. So intense, blind in one hour. That's that's hectic. Anyway, all right. In the box, side. Well done, Macar. Let's rock and roll. What's up, guys? We're at uh, Albert Falls Dam. We are fishing a hand up the Bass Club event. We've had a flipping good start to the morning. Um, put about a three and a half, maybe four kilo fish in the, in the box on a chatterbait. The bait that we're throwing, doing some damage. Very chum with my new uh, spinnerbait chatterbait uh, Pesca Pro Series rod, and I've got my Mark um, Crush reel.
Yeah, well done, boys, okay. Second fish on the chatterback, boys. Take it. It's a nice little 1.2, 1 1.3. Yes, oh, that gets it so hard, boys. Were you stuck there, Mark? I was stuck on the bush there, and I popped it off. As I popped it off, boom, chowed it. How'd it go? <laughs> Series. Let's check my line for any snags, phrase. Feels good. Let's get another one. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> yes. Getting it done, son. Shout out to that dog, boy. Get that giant. Get that giant, my dude. That's a big foot, that. Eh? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a big slab foot. hammer, that, my buddy. That's. <laughs> Big boys. <laughs> the bait fan bit, big boys, man. Yo, in the box on. Boom. That's like almost 10 kilos, three fish, boys. <laughs> in 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow, keep the predation. Oh, yeah, there's something in the shallows there, boy. Might as well keep this thing rolling. Doing what you need to do though, just bumping the chatter bay through that. So, the dead, show, dead check chicamba. Out, trailer just stays on all day, bro. No problem. Nice yeah, dude, that's what I'm here for. Hey, wingman, the net boy. Mr. Le Pan opening his account. I'll leave the four kilos to you, bud, and I'll catch the 800, 600, whatever that is. <laughs> Check that dog, dog kennel on the other side there. How are we doing? No, no, listen. Check it out. Thanks, boy. Thanks. Nice little jacuzzi for them there. Yeah, that's it. It's number four, boys. Slow. Getting there, yeah. Sorry, bro. I was just on that camera, dude. It's hard to grab the net and the camera. And yeah, it's chaos, boys. Chaos going on well done. Bad boys. And the dog came over there, son. Boys, uh, we've got some big fish in here, and I don't want them to stress. So, what we're gonna do, Brian's decided he can't, um, the fish are, I don't know what you want to call it, he wants to. Chuck his fish away, so we're gonna do that. So we don't stress these fish because these are these fish are a little bit big to get all in one way. So I'm just gonna separate them. There's number one. And I'll put one small one with that one. So they don't stress. There we go. With the pumps going nicely, that should sort them out. Okay, yeah, of course. Cool. I mean it's still I mean what time is it? But have you got your watch on? Yeah. It's a quarter past seven. Quarter past These, seven. you know, you know, we 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 had till what time, but like 11, 12. Yeah, eleven or twelve. I know, I'm gonna go do some work. So. I know the fishing till three, but I rather, like I say, give you, give you both levels, dude. Okay, cool. I appreciate you. Hundred. Five. Five in the box, boys. That's a quick limiter. Just don't put that with the four kilo. And eat it. Start culling, boy. Okay. Yeah, now we get the ones we get rid of. <sighs> yes, he ate it so hard. Eh? I thought he was a giant when he hit it, I must say. It's so aggressive. <laughs> yeah, boys. Baby back. Yeah, so there's some drama on the boat here, boys. Yeah. Uh, where's that chatter bait? Where's that's missing, son. Ah, it's missing. It's a little arms dangled, yeah? Yeah, see that? Wild. 
<laughs> I see it down, boys. Beautiful. Well done, Brian. That's a fisher. Yeah, of course I do. You got a scale? Yeah, I do. Let's go. Yeah. Some there, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you take the camera. Down the gullet. Down. Oh, there we go. So. Out. Okay. Let's go on. Yeah. Come here. Zero. Just hook it on the bottom there. Three point two seven. Nice. You go dog. It's a nice fish, boy. Nice boys. Well done. Get him back. Get him back. Well done. Happy days. Well done. <laughs> Chatterbaits, boys. Chatterbaits. <laughs> he ate that thing at the boat, boy. Hard. Nice. Hey guys. Come well on, Brian. Wait, I don't hit the gun touch the sneak motor. Dogs. Mm. You got dog. <laughs> Tell about dogs. That's a nice chunk here. Look at that quality, mm. bro. Proper, bro. Yeah. A long wrap there around the sneaker motor, bro. It's okay. I'm uh, prospecting it. <laughs> I'm gonna use the pliers again for that. It's amazing, though. It's just felt that chatterbait. The vibration just stopped. Yeah. And use some little Very good. Bags growing, boys. Hold on, boy. Key. Shut about dogs. Yes. Oh, box. <laughs> Slab hammer. <laughs> Go, dog. Got that. Shut about dog. <laughs> uh, smoking it today, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Got it on that braid. Put it in the boat, son. <laughs> Let's get the boys. Chat about dogs. Chat about dogs, boys. Maybe I should have stayed in the tournament, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden. Yes, you're putting a hammer down you. Over this flat, Ooh. unreal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big yes. Yeah, oh, help. I'm gonna have to do a little call here. Sorry, bro. <sighs> gonna help us. What do you think? What do you think, boys? You have to check it out, eh? 
just gonna get my line in. Give me a sec. Definitely bigger. Side by side. You got a balance beam here. I don't. Those are close, you have to weigh both of those, bro. You know what? I don't think any other way I can't, but anyway. Um, you got a marker. You're rolling. There's a net. You need a net. Yes, we had a double up there, boys. There you go. Yo, okay. Oh, slap hammer. <laughs> yes, it's numb. Um, I think. <laughs> nice one, bud. Chatter bait dogs. Insane. What a morning so far, bro. What a morning. Yes, look at that. Got it down. That fish ate it. As I as I crank the handle, long cast, landed, crank the handle, bang it, child. Yeah, same cast. I also got a hook up. Mine was a bit smaller than yours, so we didn't worry about that. But yeah, you know, see, that's the thing though. Why? You know, we lost fish last weekend. Yeah. I'm going on, on fishing it on braid. Yeah. There's no stretch. Hook that fish right out there. I'm a firm believer in that. Anyway, I don't need to fish. And then, can have the pies there, bro. Gotta pop this hook out. Yeah. And get you back. That's it. Let him go. Yeah. That's done, Brian. So getting it down again, eh? Maybe yeah, put on the, the chair there. Oh, there go. Get this back in the water. Yes, yeah, so I eat it down, bro. That's, I can't get it out because I can't reach the hook like. There you go. Thought I had it. Just skirts in the way. There it is there. Right at the back in the top. Let's get that puppy back. <coughs> Like a, what do you say, dog? In the box, son. <laughs> nice. I know. Oh, come on. You gonna swing it, son? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Ellen. It's a cheddarback picker. <laughs> a non color. Non color. I need to get another three or four kilo dog on the bike, chat please. That's it. Tank bag, eh? Whoa, nice to go. Yeah. How do you want it that way? Do you guys have a number? 10.64 
10650. 10650, uh, number 6. Uh, How's it guys? We've just finished up. Um, unfortunately, we've got to get off the water a little bit early. Uh, I've got to go get back to Cannon Kitchens and do a bit of work. Um, it's 12.23 now, so yeah, I think the tournament's ending at 3 o'clock, but we managed to put a, a respectable bag together. I managed to put 10.6kgs uh, on the scale. Got two nice big fish, both around 3.7, 3.8 kilos, which was really nice. Caught them all on a chatterbait, um, which was fantastic, using the new Pesca uh, Pro Series rods. Fantastic rods, very impressed. Had a lack of day, caught a couple of fish, and uh, yeah, guys, I think uh, that's it. Basically, what we were fishing today was the uh, Nanda Bass Club comp. I think this is the final uh, event for the season, and the, tour the sort of uh, angle of the year champion decider. So let's see where it puts me in standing for the season. I'm not too sure. We'll see once everyone else gets off the water. Back in, man.